Yeah, it came up for the weekend. For the weekend, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. See all the guys, yeah. Cause I got that winning feeling. They can't slow me down. I got that winning feeling. This is our 14th annual uh, DK 3 on 3. 40, 50 athletes are all coming together throughout the course of two days, and we're just kind of battling against each other three on three style. You know, there's veterans, there's there's gold medalists, there's Paralympians, and I love that format just because you wouldn't necessarily play with some of those people all the time. It's, you step out of the, the normal five on five and uh, just have fun with it. Come on. get to my stage in the game where it's not about how many championships you won, but if you're able to leave a wheel print, at least for me, what is important is that uh, I possibly had a little piece of something to do with you and your game along the way. DK is a role model for all of us. He was that little guard that reinvented the game, somebody who is a legend internationally in our sport. He, he wants to leave his wheel print on the sport, and that's what he's doing at, at events like this and tournaments around the country. It's such a blessing to have Performax in the middle of my tournament. You know, it's a culture. Anybody that sees it and feels it wants to be part of it. It's an honor being invited to this and just kind of seeing there's so much talent. I hope that I'm invited back. The idea of growing this into a, a more of a national experience is something I would really be behind. Now that we're looking at men and women gold medalists here in the United States, kids have a legitimate vehicle to dream about being a wheelchair basketball player. Not about being Michael Jordan or Kevin Durant. Now you can dream about being a Steve Serio or Matt Scott or a Becca Murray, and that could be you. Nothing's gonna stop me now.
Performax today with the one and only Matt Scott. Happy to be here. Yeah, well, thank you so much for making the trip to Dallas. This is my first trip to, to the Performax headquarters, so I had never actually seen what it takes for it to go from like a small couple bars to a gold medal finished chair, product. yeah, finished product. It's been amazing and um, a cool experience to see a finished product and what it starts from. Tell us a little bit about how the involvement with Performax uh, helps you achieve your goals as an athlete. The first wheelchair basketball chair that I've ever had was a Performax. The first time I've ever been in a sports chair was a Performax. And I think me playing in a Performax really allows me to perform at the best of my ability. Let's talk about the U.S. Paralympic team a little bit. So yeah. you're a defending gold medalist. That's right. Uh, can you talk about your journey to that get that gold? It was quite the drought that we were on. I was uh, part of the team in 04 and 08. Um, in 2012 that wasn't able to bring home the gold. Um, so to finally make our way up to, to the top of the mountain and um, show the world what we're truly capable of was just, I mean, it, it took a lot. So you have your professional wheelchair basketball career in Europe. Yep. Um, and obviously you have some involvement here in the U.S. Yep. What are your future plans for that? Well, I want to go to Tokyo. Um, it's no secret to anybody that I want to be a part of that team. Um, I'm going to work my butt off and bring home bring home another gold medal. That's that's the ultimate goal. We've we've set a we've set a standard for ourselves, a golden standard. We've proved to the world that we're the you know we're the best team, and I want to be a part of it when we uh, we do it back to back. This is our 14th annual uh, DK 3 on 3. 40, 50 athletes are all coming together throughout the course of two days and we're just kind of battling against each other 3 on 3 style. Okay, here we are. We are live. With, uh, I'm here with Colin, recent recent Illini graduate. And well, not not graduate just yet. Okay, uh, all right. Finishing up the semester with an internship. Oh, but sweet. Wanted to come support the guys and hopefully give you guys an inside view on what makes Illini wheelchair basketball and wheelchair basketball in general so great. Awesome, awesome. It was so cool to see how happy the guys were when they all saw you today. That's a good feeling. It's yeah, a, it it's is. It's a lot of camaraderie it that is. gets built up in I, the collegiate I definitely division. miss having the guys around every day and uh, grinding with them every day. Right. Because, you know, you definitely miss it when it's gone, but hopefully they can eke out a win here. There's a good start winning the tip. Noah's gonna let it go from three, right from wow. the get go. Wow, okay. We're gonna like that. All right, we're right we'll see the that one again. One of those proud dad moments, you know. Yeah, that shot was real nice. Let it go, and we needed some of those earlier today. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Auburn's going to inbound. Why and I have played Auburn twice. They've won one and lost one. And Auburn's really come a long way. They're, they're uh, as a program, they, they're, they're really looking good. They're yeah. Like four years ago, I think we put our bench in to start the game. Right. Just so it'd be close. And now they're one and one in a season series with us. So hopefully we can take the rubber match here today and have some steam going into nationals. And that's a really good defensive possession to start the game for us. Ten. Yeah. 
It's going to be a jump ball. Yeah, and the Illini have been really hard on the pressure for Auburn to get the ball over half. They almost forced a 10-second violation right there and almost got a turnover. And the shot clock's now at 15. Yeah, so Auburn's got some work to do if they want to put some points on the board yep. this possession. Good box out by Noah, and we will see if we can capitalize. Noah shows shot. He's going to let it rip. And nothing but net on that one. That was a great shot, but what you guys need to notice is Willie was the main guy that drew the defense away. Right. He took both the players, giving Noah a wide open look, and Noah's cash money on those bank shots. Yep. That's, there's a lot of stuff going on off the ball in wheelchair basketball. I'd say more than it's much more so than in the able body game in terms of trying to maneuver players to where you want them, where they're going to be most effective. And it, and it takes a lot of chess like maneuvering to make it happen. Again, they're in the backcourt. They get it across. Auburn has numbers here, so let's see what they can do. But the Illini recover pretty well. And a nice shot off the backboard. Auburn on the board. Yeah, Sam Armas is known to do that. The defense wasn't as good as it could have been, but still not a bad defensive possession, and it looked a lot better than it did this morning. Yeah. I think Noah's three for four right now. Maybe he's three for three. He's on five. More constant pressure uh -oh. from the Illini and the turnover. Miles Hill oh, goes in for the layup. And the foul from, looks like Fisher Risk. So Miles will go to the line. Pretty Got the shooter. I, I, I forgot to switch the camera. So they, they got to see a good 35 seconds of the ref's butt. Nice. You know, that's what, that's what we're about. That's what we're about. I mean, we're not a professional broadcast. So we're, we're not. We're not. That's why we're on Facebook Live. You get, the, <laughs> you get what you pay for, free broadcast. And, yeah. So Miles to make it two for two. All day. And the press is on again. Gabe doing a good job getting chair position. And it'll be a line eye ball. Did they call a travel there? I'm not sure. I am not sure what that was. He didn't have the ball that's not a travel. He pushed the Well, those, uh, those carne asada tacos for lunch must have really did the trick. Yeah, Rob, Rob Taylor for Auburn is fired up right now. He really wants this game for his guys, but it, Noah is making that a hard sell for Auburn. And why not have a 10-point lead? Nice cut, Noah. Oh, it's there. Nice defensive pressure. Come on, guys, we got a box out. We got a box out. But Duffy forces the jump ball, and that'll be a line of basketball. Going the other way. Oh, nice screen and roll by Gabe. 
Duffy looking at the basket, showing shot is what set Gabe up for that roll. Little lob over the top, easy two points. And here we have a 12 point lead. You know, one thing that, that I noticed uh, with, with the Illini, and, and I'm sure it's true for most college teams, is that January, February period of time is, it's, it's a real slog. It, it, they just seem tired. They just seem tired. And, uh, well, you know. It's springtime now. Time yeah. to wake up. Yeah. We are in March, so March Madness is in full effect. And they're looking pretty well this game. Actually forced a time out there, so it's looking good, and we'll be right back. yourself with guys who are going through the same struggle as you and you kind of feel that camaraderie and family that you had in the military. I, I knew I liked basketball so it made sense to try wheelchair basketball but I had no idea that I could be really good at this. And or maybe back. Auburn will have a chance here. They really moved forward with some speed there. And, and, and I'm sure I'm sure that the timeout was all about breaking that press, trying to oh, get yeah. down with a little bit more time on the clock. Well, with the talent that the Illini have, that press has been kind of unbeatable for a lot of teams That's in the division. That's true. That's true. This morning we didn't quite see that and we got to make adjustments for UTA, but it's working and doing everything it needs to do. And it's setting Duffy up for good offside looks like that. Um, the Illini are certainly lucky to have Duffy because he's always been amazing from that spot. He's, he's just, he never, he never gets flustered. Yeah. Hit or miss. He's the same, and that's 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 what it takes to be a pro. You just get up and you keep going to work. Well, that's Coach Bushy's big thing around the program. Um, hashtag show up is what he's been saying a lot. Right. And you can definitely tell the guys, even though they didn't play well this morning, are coming out with a mentality that they're going to take no prisoners and make sure everything goes according to plan as Willie gets the end one opportunity or the foul opportunity. And we'll see if the Illini can capitalize and make it four for four for more. There we go, Willie. Great shot, buddy. And the Illini are now four for four, and that press has come back in full force. So we'll see how Auburn wants to play it, see what they change in the timeout. So now they're looking for the cross to be strong, and you notice they're not putting anybody on the inbounder. They're double teaming on the receiver. Well, I think they want the inbounder to handle the ball right. for the most part, because right. with his classification, He's typically the least functional person out there right. for Auburn right now. So if you can force the ball into those people's hands, there's more likelihood of them making a mistake. And we see another mistake and another turnover for Auburn as the Illini will come back, um, bringing the ball up with Noah. Willie with the nice pick right here. Let's see if he can hold it. And that gave Miles a wide open lane, but Duffy's gonna take Miles it. Miles Hill all alone at the top of the key. That's a shot he'll take a lot of times. 
Yeah, but he got the pass too low and he didn't have Hard it to in get the it right up. space. Nice. So that was great awareness shown by Willie Morinchuk right there to break toward the basket knowing the shot clock and get the lob for Noah for an easy two and an 18 point lead. And that's what you want, right? You want the easy buckets oh, you whenever can, you can get them. You would take layups 100% of the time if you could. Oh, geez, Gabe. Nice. Nice, Miles. And Miles so, is just really getting strong right under the basket. Oh, and yeah. That's been one of the biggest improvements in the Illini game this year is Miles Hill just powering in. And he's not the biggest guy, but he keep, keeps his composure in there. And, and he's strong. A lot of the time, even though Miles isn't big, he's got the strength and the body. Yeah. to go up into contact, right. let people foul him, yep. and get those points at the line for the Illini. Yep, and he's been a great free throw shooter as well. I think he's two for two today, right? Oh yeah, he's two for two and Willie's two for two. Right so on. The Illini can keep it perfect if they go back to the line. Well, and he's in again. Oh, Miles again. See, that's exactly what I'm talking yep. about, going through the contact right there. That was right perfect. There. Miles. You are a prophet, Colin. I don't You think... called it. I mean, that was only like 35 seconds before, and that was a perfect example. Well, I mean, when you see the guys every day in practice. You kind of know. You, you kind of know what they're going to do as Miles stays perfect from the line. Let's see if he can make it four for four. And right back into the press. Oh, that's not a charge there? That was quite okay. a bit of contact. Yeah. I thought that would have been an offensive foul going the Illini's way, but and who knows? Maybe Auburn will turn the ball over right here. And what I'm hearing from, from the players is that they're not that concerned about getting the 10 seconds on the press. They just want to try to burn work, as much of that shot, shot clock. clock as possible and force other teams to not have enough time to work their offense. Yeah, well, and Auburn's a perfect example of that because they have a very good offense plan if they have enough time to make it work. And they've got the shooters to do it as well. And that's Thomas Duffy knocking it down. The offensive sets for the Illini right now are incredible. Right, the They're sags. making the defensive switch all the way over the court, which is freeing up either Miles or Duffy for a wide open look. Uh -oh. Okay, Noah. Oh, it's there. Still hard on the press. Really? Okay. All right. Well, I think, you know, if, if, they, if they're not going to jump it, then you got to shoot it. And that's, that's what you hit a couple of them, and then that's what opens up that oh, space, yeah. right, for Willie to use his speed and take advantage of the inside. Well, anybody in the college division these days can knock down a 15-footer. Right. If you give them room. Right. Yeah. 
So they go into the fours lineup, what they're calling it, with Talbot and J Mac, and then Duffy and and McNamara. It's a it's a, a lot of speed, a lot of speed again on this lineup as oh, well. Oh yeah, this lineup is probably one of our fastest. And look for John McNamara to take advantage of that mismatch off the pick. There's that speed right there. I mean, oh yeah, three of right on him as Duffy With gets it. called for the block. It's okay. We'll take it. That was two points they didn't need to have. Yeah. Although I don't even really think that was a block on Thomas. Right. To be completely yeah, I mean, honest, everybody's but. moving pretty fast in that situation. Yeah. John Elliston has really come a long way this season. You just, the way he's moving with a lot more confidence, it's oh, yeah. great to see. Well, he's almost like a Noah when you give him the bank shot. I think last week he had a career high 16. Yeah, for the he couldn't miss. He around. couldn't miss. Yeah. I've been saying all season, if everybody if everybody's feeling flat, just give him to Elliston at that bank, man. He doesn't care. Oh, Talbot, straight to the basket. Beautiful ball movement by the oh, Atlanta man. here as no one turns a, it over. I like to see the speed on some of these passes. But with a lot of ball swings, sometimes you got to back it up a little. Yeah, and it's... It's just kind of predictable right? sometimes. Yeah. Particularly Illinois, a team that likes to swing the ball. You kind of know how it's going to move across the court. And especially when you throw it low, it's easy to get a hand out there and block a pass. The J -Mac, man. Auburn now swinging the ball around. Good luck. That's good nope. defense from John Elliston. Right. Not overplaying it. Is that, what, what, what were you seeing there, Colin? Well, they know their role, and they're not going to jump out to give easy picking angles because that gives up a layup. Right. So if you can get in someone's face enough to contest the shot, that's all that matters. Armis now to swing. And it... and it looks like where Auburn's getting into trouble right now is when they're trying to go cross court passes in their offensive side. Right. Those are a lot of time errant and out of the range of a lot of their players because right. they're trying to give up. Pass too high. That's high. Right. To a 2.0 who doesn't have the range to reach up there and grab it. Right. <laughs> Again. Nice offensive rebound from J Mac right there. J Mac just. J Mac just is is. He's, he's so explosive. 
He just, he, he seems like he's not moving and then he's just gone. Oh yeah. Well, and that actually comes from a lot of extra work. Yeah. He, he goes into the gym with a couple of our former Illini. Uh-huh. Um, pretty much every day. Yeah. And uh, Ryan Nicewinder, who's actually on the USA team right now, trains with J-Mac fairly consistently at least three to four times a week outside of practice. That's, that's great. And that kind of dedication while being a student, while already having lifting, practice every day, it's, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. And he's coming a long way. You, you can definitely see it this year. Well, just the way he carries himself, yeah. his confidence has grown right. tenfold. Already down to 16 on the shot clock before they can get their first pass off. I got to say, I wouldn't like to have to play offense against the Illini right now. Right. It would be pretty tough. I got to hand it to Auburn because I think 15 points is a pretty good showing out of what we're seeing. Right. So let's hope our guys can keep this up and bring it the rest of this game and tomorrow too. Oh, nice, Noah. That was a beautiful read and communication from Noah and Talbot right there. They locked eyes and knew exactly what each other was going to do. That comes from hours in the gym working with each other and knowing exactly where your teammates are going to be. Locked eyes. I love it. I love it. It is a beautiful game. It's a beautiful sport. It is. Much better than the able body game, in my opinion. I, I, you know, I, that's where I'm at at this point. I, 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 I will watch um, some able body ball, and I'll enjoy it. But to me, there's... Shit. talking about it um, because they're a Canadian company, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're out of Montreal, I think. Right. So as, as I was trying to say before the break, um, wheelchair basketball is a lot better because everyone has to constantly move. Right. Like, yeah, you're fighting on the ball, off the ball. And able-bodied basketball, you'll see a lot of guys kind of stand around and wait for something to happen. Wheelchair basketball, you're not really allowed for that to work. And one. People don't play like that. And one, Miles has to be selling from the point that he's going. Right. So it's always a little chess game between the defense and the offense because everybody has to move. So Willie will go to the line. He's two for two so far, and we'll see if he can make it four for four. And Willie is perfect from the line. Got press again. It's just relentless. And it looks like Auburn's going to have about 15 seconds to play with when they finally get set up. And you'll see the foul called on Gabe there. It's not that Gabe didn't have good chair positioning. He just got there probably about a half second too late. Right. When the offensive player had already established position. So much like the able body game, it's a blocking foul. Right. And that leads to an easy two off the inbound for Auburn. But 
As we close in on two minutes to go in the half, the Illini still have a commanding lead. And that's probably a smart play by Gabe right there to go ahead and foul because Auburn had numbers coming down and that See, I'd much rather take, you know, an open 17 footer. Yeah, from he a earned it. He earned than that. A wide open layup. Yeah. So. To an easy Nolan and Willie have really uh, seemed to find find a, a, a connection. Both Noah and Willie and Noah and Talbot. And even though both Willie and Talbot are great shooters, um, they're also very effective and strong on the inside and able to get that pick and roll. You put Noah on the inside on the screen, he just doesn't have the core to get up oh, and yeah. get in there. And so for some reason, and it's always been that way. Everybody always jumps Noah, no matter what. And so those big guys are going to go in. Even if he's missing everything, they keep jumping him. It's just been the... Score, Illinois 36, Auburn 23. Yeah. Well, not right this second. The pick and roll is one of the main ways that you'll see scoring happen in wheelchair basketball. Um, there's a couple different things to think about when we're looking at the pick and roll. Um, one, a lot of times we'll use the pick and roll um, and you'll see teams get a wide open layup off of it um, because you've picked, a defender is out, and there's a free lane to the basket where you can roll. Sometimes what you'll also see off of a pick and roll is we've created a mismatch. So you'll have someone offensively who's a bit taller or a bit faster um, get a little bit closer to the basket in a mismatch situation that they can take advantage of. And I think one of the other things that you'll see off of a pick and roll is that it will cause some kind of defensive rotation so that you're moving defenders around in order to get one of your other teammates on the other side of the court open. So when you look at a pick and roll, a lot of times it's not just what you generate on one side of the court, but it's what it's opening up on the other side of the court. For me, what is important is that I possibly had a little piece of something to do with you and your game along the way. It's all about the person next to you, man. I always felt that way with teammates and, and in life, you know. It's, it's about other people. I played for the U.S. national team for four different decades and was a captain of most of those teams and there was some gold medals and uh, other medals and a lot of jubilation and, and a lot of heartbreak along the way but all that got me to this point right now where I'm in a give back mode. I've always felt that way about basketball is to not just be on the take. I became commissioner of the NWBA as a player just because of my desire to try to leave the sport better than you know when I was in it. Three on three came to me because I, I love street ball. I thought about the opportunity where other players would get the chance to play with great players that they never thought they'd have the chance to play with. That's why the format here is you enter as an individual 
and then we do a draw or make the draw ourselves so that we level the playing field as much as we can. Performex is involved and we bring in some of their players to sprinkle with the local talent. It's just got win-win written all over it. Every year we have some new faces, but the, the core group keeps coming back because they, they love it. I get a lot of feedback from young players that I made a difference in their life, not, not just basketball, but in their life. And that I can take with me, uh, with my head up high, even more so than wins and golds. With the start of this three on three, it's bigger than any individual. It's bigger than me. It's not what you lost, it's what you gained. This is my first trip to, to the Performax headquarters, so I had never actually seen what it takes for it to go from like a small couple bars to a gold medal chair, yeah, finished product. It's been amazing and um, 
a cool experience to see a finished product and what it starts from. Tell us a little bit about how the involvement with Performax uh, helps you achieve your goals as an athlete. The first wheelchair basketball chair that I've ever had was a Performax. The first time I've ever been in a sports chair was a Performax. And I think me playing in a Performax really allows me to perform at the best of my ability. Let's talk about the U.S. Paralympic team a little bit. So yeah. you're a defending gold medalist. That's right. Uh, can you talk about your journey to that get that gold? It was quite the drought that we were on. I was uh, part of the team in 04, in 08, um, in 2012 that wasn't able to bring home the gold. Um, so to finally make our way up to, to the top of the mountain and um, show the world what we're truly capable of was just, I mean, it, it took a lot. So you have your professional wheelchair basketball career in Europe, yep. um, and obviously you have some involvement here in the U.S. Yep. What are your future plans for that? Well, I want to go to Tokyo. Um, it's no secret to anybody that I want to be a part of that team. Um, I'm going to work my butt off and bring home bring home another gold medal. That's that's the ultimate goal. We've we set a we set a standard for ourselves, a golden standard. We've proved to the world that we're the you know we're the best team, and I want to be a part of it when we uh, we do it back to back. It's really important to take advantage of the services that are available and two of those resources are um, vocational rehabilitation and SSI. Vocational rehabilitation is really important because their job is to prepare individuals with disabilities to have careers and college education is a big part of that. The key though with DVR is to get started early, at least your junior year of high school. As far as SSI goes, it's federal money that's there for your student to take advantage of while they are in school to help them get through. What we see a lot of times is that it's a process that takes time. When students and parents wait until midway through their senior year of high school, it becomes too late. Too much time to get that settled before they go to school. And there's so many systemic barriers that are in place for students with disability that this is one thing that's really important to give your child the best opportunity. While it's work to put in and it's time to put in, it's ultimately in the long run incredibly important to get that taken care of. To go on and have a college education and to go on and be whatever it is that they want to be after they graduate high school. Alright, right. right. And we're, and we're back. Myself and the one and only Colin Turtle Fletcher. And the Illini have looked good so far this game. Let's see if they can keep their 13 point lead as we head into the second half. Oh, finds a nice little dump on the inside but can't hold on to it. That was quick hands by Willie coming up with the steal, and we'll see if the Illini are able to capitalize and get oh, the Oh, Willie's right down that big hole they left. Sometimes you get you get kind of lulled into the Illini offense. Yeah. And you forget that, that someone like Willie can just turn it on when he needs to. Well, that's how a lot of foul and free throw opportunities happen for us because selective speed and use of that is great from guys like William J. Mack. We're back to what they, what the Illini like to refer to as the old school lineup right here. This was the go-to lineup for most of last season and and, and the year before. And the I year think. before. Yeah. No, well, Willie wasn't here. Willie wasn't there, but they they had similar roles. Yeah. yeah. And similar classifications too. Yes, that's right. It's, it's a solid line and probably the most disciplined line, right? Yeah, and well, when you have somebody like Dago who is a fourth year senior, who I think is taking a fifth year next year. Right. But out there on the floor to help direct these younger guys, yeah. especially on defense, right. to not have to worry about one of your five guys. Right. That's so huge in wheelchair basketball. Yep, and and he always makes the right call. Well, not always. Okay, There's never right. always. Okay, but, I like, tried, Doggo. I tried, Doggo. This is me to you, hermano, Sabrino. <laughs> if 
but Turtle wasn't having it. Now Auburn kind of working it. Oh, that was a good jump by Gabe. Got a little piece of that. All the way. No, he didn't even touch it. Oh, wow. Just, yeah, just he forced just scared him to kind Fisher of. To the point where. He misfired. He misfired. Wow. And that's what defenses try to do just get in your head. Right. Well, because if I, they think you're coming out, it's a lot harder to shoot. I agree. And I, I always wondered like, sometimes a guy. A little, a smaller guy will just have his hand up, and I always wonder, well, well, just shoot it. Who cares? You can't do anything. It is hard to shoot with a hand waving in front of your face. I mean, even if you think you don't notice it, the back of your mind, yep. always you know someone's there. It, and it's incredibly effective. Oh, yeah. I, I, I strongly recommend anybody that that gets a chance, hop in the air sometime. Try it and give it a shot. You will see uh, how difficult it is to play this sport and the amount of dexterity, um, basically uh, bi bilateral thinking, having to use both sides of your brain. Oh, yeah. um, it's, it, it is really an amazing skill that these guys are learning and mastering. Nothing but net for Jankowski. I don't think I've ever seen that shot out of Kyle. I loved it though. Yeah. It was amazing. And he just turned around and acted like no big deal. What you have to do in this sport. Right. So you gotta be ready for the next play. As It's gonna be on Gabe. I think that's Gabe's third. I believe so. so. He only has two to play with, and we'll He's see been what... playing nice and aggressive. I know. After that game this morning, I think they're all kind of feeling it. And realizing with Wichita coming up, they're, they're going to have to be ag aggressive if they want to win it all. Well, there's only two weeks, and there's no easy path for the championship. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. But I would say for the first time in years, there is a path. There is a path, but well, it's not going to be easy. Well, there's always a path. That's, That's right. That's why you play the game. Right, right. But as we've seen this year throughout the college division, especially, any one team can come out and have a great game and beat anybody. Yeah, there is a ton of parity in the college division this year. You know, outside of UTA, who has has remained pretty dominant um, in the second place spot, teams have been winning and losing to each other in really unpredictable ways. Well, we saw Whitewater go down to Missouri for like the first time in what two or three years last week, right? And not and not just go down, but got, but they really got beat. There was there was no there was no uh, mitigating factor there. And um, U of A also um, beaten by uh, Missouri. Illinois beaten Missouri twice. Um, it's just all over the map where where these games, who's winning and who's beating who. And I'm excited to see Alabama because we haven't seen them since the very first game of the season tomorrow, and see where they're where, what they're looking like right now after a season of basketball. And you know Alabama is going to have this place rocking tomorrow afternoon. Oh, I bet. I bet. They have this nice, pretty much brand new arena for all the teams to play in, which has kind of set the standard for wheelchair basketball and wheelchair athletic schools around the country. And that's what it takes sometimes. It, it, takes, it, takes, uh, it takes a college to throw down the gauntlet and all of a sudden you get 
a dean at Illinois or a dean at UTA that sees this place and goes, why don't we have that for our athletes? And, and you know, some alumni get together. We hope, we hope in a couple of years we'll be announcing a new facility too. The Colin down the Fletcher, line. the Colin Fletcher Colin Adaptive Lafon. Athletics Gymnasium. No, we should just call it the Frog New Gymnasium. The Turtle. The Frog and the Turtle. No. <laughs> or uh, name it after Dr. Nugent. Well, great you, pioneer of the sport. That is, that is very generous of you. To, after donating all of that money to to all request of, that it be named after all of some of these money, legends is a good idea. All of that money. When I make an intern salary. As Noah continues to stay on fire and drain three pointers, the Illini have now stretched the lead to 18. Uh oh, uh oh. And show no signs of slowing down. Fisher going to the line. Fisher's really improved in the last three three years and, and can be a, just a deadly shooter. In, in the Auburn victory over the Illini, uh, Fisher was a huge, huge part of that. Well, even in shooting today, when you leave him wide open behind a screen, he yeah. knocked those down. Right. And it's really great to see from the entire college division and the league especially, because having people like this that can play at a high level Right. and continue to hit shots makes the game exciting and keeps people coming back for more. Right. Mm. So the way Auburn set that up, was really good off the ball movement with crossing and transition. And that caused Talbot to be there a little late and get called for the block, so Sam Marmis at the line. Wheelchair basketball is pretty much all about angles and anything you can do to cross another person out because there's no lateral movement and the game just gets so much more difficult when you're not able to move on a horizontal plane to guard someone right and so are you saying that the angles in order to get forward movement without lateral movement it has to be at an angle pretty much okay all right especially on defense you'll right. see a lot of guys play at a 45 degree angle like Duffy right here. Right. He's not going to go straight foot plate because that'll give up position and someone will be able to drive around him. Right. But if he plays at a 45, he's able to turn in either direction. Right. And, and maintain momentum. On, yes. For maintain his momentum turn into his push. For his turn and cut people off. And starting and stopping in wheelchair basketball especially for low class players right is extremely hard right Talbot with the good communication we'll see if it pays off with a defensive rebound right here no need for that, says Fisher Risk, as he goes I down. Think, and I don't think makes that was Fisher. That was oh, the Luke other Robinson. Guy. Luke Robinson. That's that what is I was looking for. My mistake. There we go. There we go. Oh, Noah, take the layup. Oh, oh it's right there. See Auburn trying to cross in transition and create numbers. 
Now they have a 5 on 4 advantage. And, and Auburn seems to be doing a much better job um, getting the ball down the floor. So well, there's some adjustments they've made, and it looks like the Illini are, are backing a little bit off on the press, would you say? It's, it's probably the point in the game where the Illini see that it's more beneficial to work on their half-court set for when they need it in games against, you know, Whitewater, UTA, or Mizzou, which are two, three, four point games. Right. Right down to the wire. Yeah. Because um, being able to play a press is great, but if you can't stop somebody in the half court, right, you're just going to give up layups or wide open shots yeah. that anyone can hit. Yeah. what they want right they want that jump open up some space but Auburn doing a really good job defensively right there making the switch even when they were jumping all the way out of the three-point line they worked together well to prevent that that picker from rolling in well that's why you have to practice this game every day because it seems flawless when people do it here and easy to do but that takes years of communication and trust with all your different teammates right yep that makes a lot of sense miles hill knocks down the second one and again Using that, using that toughness on the inside to get those fouls. She's gonna lay it up. And she can be quite a shooter as well. Oh yeah, she can. Noah kind of got her out of her rhythm there from faking from low. Right. Which caused the miss last second. Okay, just a, a little twitch. Little twitch. It always gets in the back of your mind. Matt Talbot with the N1 going up strong. They'll have an opportunity to make it a three-point play and extend this lead out to 21, as we'll have a sub for Almond with 11.05 left in the Illini men's Friday evening game. Talbot getting the three. Oh, rolls around and rolls on in. And that was a great job by the shooter from Auburn in using what the defense gave her. Right. Because Noah wasn't able to go out to her without giving up a lane for a wide open layup. As Noah comes back with the answer, but it's a constant back and forth and what teams are willing to give you and just making sure you're willing to capitalize right. whatever the opportunity is right. Yeah, that's right. You, you'll let them take this shot instead of that shot. And a lot of teams as they game plan, especially in college, will talk about scenarios they're okay with giving up. I know we don't see it primarily in the juniors game, but at higher level games like college and international, we see teams willing to part with a fifth threat, low point classification, taking, you know, a semi-contested shot right. over a big man shooting over someone right. from two feet. Yeah. So it's that constant give and take and just kind of chess game and making sure that you have the upper hand on your opponent. Mm -hmm. Game of percentages. 
Yes. Makes the first one. It's going to get a chance to shoot the second. And, and I, I have been very impressed with her over the years. I wonder how much eligibility she has left. As long as she wants, in my book. <laughs> as long as she wants? Yeah. She's fun to watch. She's a smart player, too. Yeah. Um, on defense. She's not super fast. And what a lot of times what you'll find is those players that may not be super fast, they get super smart. And they get very economical in their movement and get to be very good at predicting, um, you know, the movements of others and are able to be where they need to be in time. And that's... That's, a, that's another part of the game. And the beautiful part of um, an inclusive sport like wheelchair basketball that using the classification system, I mean, it's just really pure genius. You're good, Noah. Looks like Noah might be looking for a three right here. Not entirely sure. There it is. Yeah, back to what you were saying about the classification system, though. The great part about wheelchair basketball is putting together a puzzle right. with every lineup. Right. And kind of recreating that whenever you need to change or seeing how you would play different teams. Like the old school lineup that we brought in earlier or that the Illini brought in earlier might be better suited to teams like Auburn, whereas the starting lineup is one that can run with another team. Right. It's all about how you can maximize that 14 points throughout your five players. And there's Jonathan Elliston. Not as comfortable from that side, I've noticed. Yeah, well, he might be trying to shoot across from his body right. on that side. Yep. Um, a lot of the time, shooters are thrown off if they have to unlock their shoulder to... Open it up. Open it up. Right. That almost adds a hitch into your shot. Right. And it makes a lot of people uncomfortable. So that's why you'll see a lot of guys gravitate towards one side of the floor or defenses try to jump the opposite direction and make shooters uncomfortable so they have to put the ball in their non-dominant hand right. and keep it there to take away a shooting angle. Yeah, that's right. Get Auburn crashing the offensive boards. And Luke, another another guy that gets can get really hot and be a really effective shooter. Yeah, shot looked good on that last one. Mm -hmm. He's just a little short. Probably sure. and being tired in wheelchair basketball can translate, you know, an air ball to a nothing but net swish. Yep because what a lot of people don't understand is it's really hard to shoot from a wheelchair. And these guys make it look super easy. Um, so Armis with his second free throw here. And that's just automatic for a player like him. Right. Come on, Ellison. That's your side, baby. And there, and there it is. All right. He had the shoulder squared up and let it fly nothing but not. And I, you can hear the Illini going crazy on the bench for their teammate. You know, that bank shot is it, there's a lot there's a lot of math to it. And I've really tried to I've tried to get several of the Illini players to do the the, the actual math, right? Because um, yeah, I think it's just mathematically 
the size of the basket versus the size of the basketball, the angle of approach of the basketball. I think it, it, it's just one of the highest percentage of shots in the sport. That's true. And you're shooting at a target you can see instead of arcing to drop onto a target. But, you know, to each their own. Yeah. And we have guys like Thomas Duffy that... Right, he just wants that. You know, wants when, that they, when they take that bank, they can. Right. But what they've done their whole lives is shoot from the baseline, and that's the one thing that they can do well. Right, yep. Oh. I think it's a good idea right now. If you get an open look at a three, take it right now. Because coming into Wichita, they're going to need to be more effective as a... I know they wanted to be a team that was known for shooting threes, but as the season's worn on, we've seen less and less of them. And I think that that's gotten the Illini into a lot of holes right. recently because they don't have confidence in their three-point shots when they need to hit them at the end of games. Right. This and team and all the teams in the college division are able to hit three-pointers, but the mental side of the game and having confidence in yourself and in your shots is the biggest thing. I was trying to give him the, you know, victorious after basket shot. Yeah. <laughs> I think I just tripped him up. Got him. <laughs> I yeah, thought they that, were going to call I, a foul I, on for that one. Yeah, I totally agree, though. I think, I mean, we got a lot of players. You saw early in the season, you saw Thomas Duffy just lighten it up from the point. And, and it's been a while. And we, we, we spoke in between the games, and, and, and he recognizes it. Um, so when, you, when you're up by 19, 20, and you get an open look, and you are a player that can shoot it, Shoot it. Just get comfortable with it. With your muscles tired, game tired. Yeah, but a lot of players have that in their minds and they can shoot it, but it's a lot different when they try to shoot in a close game. Right, sure. Yep. Yeah, no, absolutely. Practice now. Practice now. Yeah. And, 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 and the dynamic definitely does change in a close game. But hopefully players on both teams will be able to draw from games like this when they get into those moments where, right. you know, it's the last two minutes of the game, have no fouls to burn, and you need to put up a three. You have confidence in yourself. And even if you miss, you trust that you can make it. Let's give him a good, there we oh go. Oh my That's gosh. what I'm talking about. Some redeeming, some redeeming <laughs> close-up victory <laughs> shot there. Knocking down another one. Luke Robinson seemed to be unfazed by Matt Talbot's jump right there. Yep. Well, he knew it was coming. He told him. <laughs> That's Kyle's bank right there. I've known Kyle for a while, and that shot for Kyle has become really reliable. From that side? From that side, okay. over the past few years. Yeah, he's been shooting great. And, and, and it, the thing I love about Kyle is he'll shoot over a guy. He doesn't care. Hand in the face, he's kind of used to being that big guy. Well, the advantage that Kyle has is his chair setup, his legs are out so much so further from up. his body ah, so it gives him a little know, a extra buffer eight inch buffer okay. from anybody that's trying to guard him in the front right you almost have a better chance at guarding someone like Kyle 
from the back right. if you're trying to contest right, the ball. Right. And when you guard from the back, oftentimes you're going to get called for a foul. And now it's Matt, Matt Talbot, Talbot just lights it up from three. That's what we were just talking about that again. Somehow I feel like, Turtle, you and I are actually threading the fabric of reality together <laughs> right now. Maybe. Maybe. Jonathan nice Elston right Jonathan there. Elston. Oh. Can't quite get, grab it. I really need to experiment with this. Um, there's apparently on, in the Switch Sling Studio application, there is the opportunity to do vocal commands where I can say switch. Really? Yeah, instead of having to rely on like this, I'm both watching the game, watching the game two seconds ago, which is what we see on our monitor, and watching the other camera. Well. I think everybody should be thankful that we're able to provide a stream um, as high quality as we do right now because I know before you got here, um, like my freshman year of college and 2016, 2017, right. we didn't have a stream like this. Yeah. Well, and what I like is that everybody's getting it now. Everybody's getting it. And, you know, I, I, I take a small amount of credit, but. You know, I always give it directly to, to my buddy Jeremy Shack at UTA who, yeah. who just decided he oh, was yeah. going to do it. And, and that's what it took was because I was like, okay, he's doing it. How can I do it? And then everybody else was kind of, you know, you even got, you even got the NWBA uh, officers walking around with iPads, live streaming stuff. It's just, it's just awesome. And it's especially great to see heading into a Paralympic year garnering excitement for the sport of wheelchair basketball Matt, and just Matt Talbot I just I feel like I could just run that shot that this little clip right here on replay and we, we would see a good portion of the game yeah just killing it yeah I think he has oh and there goes Josh Joins points. Josh Joins and Sam Arm former teammates, teammates. Josh Racing down the decision, court and though. Josh coming out with it this time. I know that made uh, Jason Joins happy. And Josh with the coming, assist to Thomas Duffy. Coming out with two. I bet you that's a great moment of pride for both of those two to go head to head when they used to play on the same juniors team and be teammates they know each other so well right yeah that getting the upper hand is kind of paramount you have bragging rights then, right after the game yeah oh for sure well you know it, and it is one of the amazing things in sports you see some guys now you see some guys that have been playing together you know, in the adult division, they've been playing together since junior. It's been playing together for 35, 40 years. Oh, yeah. With each other, against each yeah. other. Well, that's the great thing about this community. Um, you have lifelong friends. Yeah, absolutely. Forever, and the sport just keeps going up. And, and that's going to be that's going to be our game today. As the Illini take a 23-point win. Over Auburn, final score, Illini 70, Auburn 47. Well, Turtle, I, this is fun. We're going to have to do some more of this. 
Like, we should do some more of this in about 31 minutes. What do you think? Nah, man. Come on, man. I, I told Jay we not gotta, to take him out to dinner. All right. Okay, that is... I'm not getting in between any of that. We'll see you guys at 3 o'clock. Alabama women, Illini women. It's going to get rowdy around here. <laughs>